Hello everybody. So the cross is offensive and at the very least it's a trap and a snare to Christians and religious people. You know, as I took a vacation this past week in the Smoky Mountains and going down south there's crosses everywhere. And I was driving past this giant 50 foot cross on the side of the road and it occurred to me that the cross means something very different to Christians and religious people than it does to members of the body of Christ. The cross to Christians and religious people is something for them to attain to. Yes, Jesus did an act, but now it's their turn to perform good works or follow the law or do what they need to do in order to be worthy of that act of Jesus Christ, in order to complete the righteousness. Whereas the cross to the members of the body of Christ is a complete act in itself. So we get our righteousness from the cross alone, without adding any work of law or anything of ourselves to that completed righteousness. So through the death, entombment, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his righteousness that is given to us in a complete act, that's how we attain our righteousness, whereas the religious person has to do certain works to complete the righteousness for themselves. And that's where we get into the difference between James and Paul. But why is the cross, as I'm going to read Paul here in Romans 9, 30 to 33, why is it a snare? Why is it a trap? Why? Because the religious person is trying to pursue righteousness, the very righteousness that was completed on the cross. See, Jesus Christ completed the righteousness, and he gives it to us freely, by grace. But religious people want to continue to work to attain the righteousness that has already been done for them. And that's why it's a snare, because they are pursuing the very thing that the cross has completed. Romans chapter 9, verse 30 to 33. What then shall we be declaring? That the nations who are not pursuing righteousness overtook righteousness, yet a righteousness which is out of faith. Yet Israel, pursuing a law of righteousness, into a law of righteousness does not outstrip. Wherefore, seeing that is not out of faith, but as out of law works, they stumble on the stumbling stone, according as it is written. Lo, I am laying in Zion a stumbling stone and a snare rock. So a snare rock, a trap, a stumbling stone is the cross. Why is that, as Paul explains here? Because these Jewish religious people are pursuing righteousness by works of law. They are trying to earn their righteousness. And the cross is a trap for them because the cross completes righteousness. It's done by what Jesus Christ did, not by their pursuit of righteousness. So they're so in love with their pursuit of righteousness that when someone came along and by their faith, Jesus Christ's faith, he completed that righteousness that's a trap for religious people because they are pursuing righteousness. They need to achieve and attain to that righteousness. So when someone comes along and did the righteousness for them, completed the act, finished it, and presents it to them, they can't handle it because they're used to law. They're used to working. They're used to attaining it themselves. And it's the same thing with Christians today. Every religion you go to, doesn't matter what denomination it is, even outside the Christian religion, every single religion has things you have to do, has things you have to believe in, has things you have to perform in and of yourselves apart from God in order to walk the walk to get the righteousness that is offered by the deity. In Christian circles, you have to follow certain laws, you have to do certain things, take sacraments, have certain beliefs 
in order to complete or attain the cross. Yeah, Jesus Christ started it, but you have to do your thing in order to complete that righteousness. Where this is what Paul is talking about is a trap. It's a trap because the righteousness is complete. You don't have to do anything. Jesus Christ went to the cross. He went to death. He had the faith that God was going to raise him from the dead. That's exactly what God did. And when God did that, Jesus became the firstborn of a new creation and had a righteousness that he gives to us because of his death, entombment, and resurrection. We participate with Jesus in that so that we participate in his righteousness as well, apart from anything we have done. So whenever you look at a church, whenever you try to attain what can only be attained by the act of the Son of God, then you're pursuing your own righteousness and the cross is going to be a snare to you. Because if you look at what Jesus did, that puts churches out of business because no longer can they force people to follow certain rules to attain what has already been done for them. But as long as they keep people in pursuit of righteousness, as long as they keep people needing to finish the cross with their own righteousness, then they can keep the pews filled. And that's why the cross is a snare, because if that righteousness is complete by what Jesus Christ did, then people can just look to Jesus Christ and, and know that they are righteous, come to that realization because of what he did, and then there is no pursuit of righteousness, and there is no rule book to follow, there is no pastor or church code to follow. And this is what they do in Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. These are people that have a zeal for God. And in chapter 3, For they, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness, were not subjected to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the consummation of the law for righteousness to everyone who is believing. So that's what Christians do. That's what religious people do. They inject their own righteousness into completing the cross. And by doing that, they reject outright God's righteousness. What is God's righteousness? If you look at Romans 3.21, it is apart from law. Let's go there. Romans 3.21. Yet now, apart from law, a righteousness of God is manifest. Yet a righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and are wanting of the glory of God. So it's based on Jesus Christ's faith, his death, entombment, and resurrection. That's where we get our righteousness. Anyone who looks to add something to that, their own works, their own law, their own pursuit of righteousness, then they deny that God's righteousness, what Jesus Christ did, completed it all. And they deny God's righteousness because they continue to pursue their own righteousness and again going back to chapter 9 that's why the cross is a snare so now James and people who love the law people who need to pursue works of righteousness they need James they need James anyone who loves law anyone who thinks they're better than someone else that keeps the law better and and they should be heralded because they did that. They quote James all the time. They love James. Because James, if you look at James 125, James says, Now he who peers into the perfect law, that of freedom, Paul says that the only freedom you have comes apart from law. But here James is equating law with freedom, so there's another big difference there. And abides, not becoming a forgetful listener but a doer of the work this one will be happy in his doing so James is talking about abiding in the law Paul talks about the law being exempted Paul talks about the law being an escort to Jesus Christ and once you get to Jesus Christ it's discarded like we said in Romans 3:21, we are saved and we get a righteousness apart from law apart from works of law 
Paul says the law cannot justify. So Paul completely eliminates the law and James says to abide in the law and that's freedom? That's the complete opposite of what Paul says. You cannot bring the two together. But people will continue to preach James if they want to follow law, if they think they can attain something to complete that cross. And that's why the cross is a snare to them. Going to uh, James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will be drawing near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, double-souled. Okay, so James is talking about how the people he's talking to here. And remember, these people are um, big-time sinners, murderers. They're you know, disgraceful, they're adulterers, they're coveting, they're fighting, they're jealous. And this is to the 12 tribes. So law was not helping them act any better here. Just a side note. But this is from a very human perspective that James is writing. Draw close to God. Cleanse your own hands. Well, that's the complete opposite of what Paul says. If you look at Romans chapter 5, verse 9 through 11, What does Paul say? Paul says that while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. For if, in verse 10, being enemies, we were conciliated to God through the dust of his son, much rather being conciliated, we shall be saved by his life. So that is God reaching out and making an act. It's God that conciliates us to himself, not us drawing close to God and he'll draw close to us. No, he draws close to us and conciliates us. For in him we live and move and have our being. And he, can't, he gives us any, everything. We can't give him anything that he has first not given to us. He gives us all things, breath, life, and all. So he, he draws close to us. He conciliates us. While we were sinners, while we were enemies. So he makes the move. That's what Paul says. And James says that we draw close to him. We need to cleanse our own hands. Well, that's something very different. It's from a human perspective. And it's from the circumcision perspective. Where it's us people completing the righteousness by works of the law. Along with believing that Jesus is the Messiah. And that's why Christians need to quote James and love James and discard Paul because that supports their law and their own works of righteousness. So they're going to continue to pursue righteousness in order to attain the cross, in order to complete the cross, because that's the circumcision message that James preaches, and they have to quote it in order to hold on to their own righteousness, in order to hold on to their church, in order to hold on to their, their own pursuit of righteousness, because Paul eliminates it. Righteousness is a complete act, apart from anything they do, but based on the faith of Jesus Christ, his death, entombment, and resurrection. That is complete and given to us, and that eliminates the circumcision message for us and any pursuit of righteousness for us. And Christians can't handle that, so they have to go back to James. Romans 11, 4 through 7. Let me go there. Minutes. 11, 4 through 7. Thus then, in the current era also, there has come to be a remnant according to the choice of grace. Now, if it is in grace, it is no longer out of works, else the grace is coming to be no longer grace. Now, if it is out of works, then it is no longer grace, else the work is no longer work. Grace and works are incompatible. They do not mix. We are saved by grace. We are saved by based on nothing we have done. So we cannot boast. It's all based on what Jesus Christ has done for us. That's it. The minute you say you have to do something in order to maintain it, or to keep it, or any act of law in order to get a reward, then it's no longer grace that we're under. And if you're wor doing works of law, then that completely eliminates grace. So the two are incompatible. We are saved by grace. The minute you go into law, 
that eliminates grace. You're not, un, you're not under grace anymore if you're pursuing law. So law is completely apart from our message. Works are a complete separate act from our message, from our righteousness. Our righteousness is complete, and we do good works because we were given righteousness. That's the fruit of our righteousness. It is not the root of our righteousness like it is for James and the Christians who want to quote James. All right, I, I am going to finish these last two verses, even though it's going to go a little long here. Galatians 2, verses 15 to 17. Paul speaking again. We who by nature are Jews and not sinners of the nations had perceived that a man is not being justified by works of law except alone through the faith of Christ Jesus. We also believe in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of law seeing that by works of law shall no flesh at all be justified. That's what Paul says. And James says that Faith is dead without works of law. They are complete opposites. There's no way you can justify the two. So when Christians and circum, you know, even circumcision believers, when they look for their own righteousness, when they need to do things to attain the law, they, they quote James, and then they discard Paul. They discard messages like this. And they, they either completely ignore Paul or they try to mix the messages to make Paul's gospel fit with James. Or James' messages is complete obvious. You cannot combine these two. You cannot make them mesh, not at any level. And people will write essays upon essays trying to jam works into the completed work of Christ. And you just cannot do that. Along the same lines, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, O foolish Galatians, who bewitches you? before whose eyes Jesus Christ was graphically crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you get the Spirit by works of law or by the hearing of faith? So foolish are you undertaking in spirit. Are you now being completed in flesh? And what Paul is saying here is that the Galatians came to that belief of the completed work of Jesus Christ in spirit and then these people from James or people from the circumcision are coming in trying to inject law into that message. So they're saying what the Christians say today, their argument is, yeah, you, you have to believe in Jesus, but then you have, to, you have to follow the law as well. Well, that's exactly what Paul is speaking about here. You weren't saved by following the law. You're saved by the faith of Jesus Christ, his death, entombment, and resurrection as stated in chapter 2, verse 15 to 17 of Galatians. That's how you're saved. Paul explains how you're saved, and it's apart from law, apart from works of law. And then, as the circumcision people come in and inject law, the Galatians are now following law in order to complete or maintain their righteousness. And Paul says, how dare you? You didn't get this grace. You didn't get the righteousness of God through what Jesus Christ did by doing the law or doing anything of your own. So why would you do the law now to keep it or maintain it? It doesn't make any sense. So Christians who try to tell you about doing law, they're violating what Paul is graphically defending here in Galatians. We're saved by the righteousness of Jesus Christ apart from law. So doing law to keep that righteousness is absurd. It's contradictory to everything that Paul is talking about and the message of the completed work of Jesus Christ. So this is why the cross is a snare. You have circumcision believers who believe Jesus is the Messiah and they must do works of law to complete their righteousness. That's a message for them. The message that Paul gives is completely opposite of James, completely opposite of Peter, 
completely opposite of that circumcision message. It's a message based entirely on the completed work of Jesus Christ through his faith, his death, entombment, and resurrection. Righteousness is given to us apart from anything we have done, apart from works of law. And works of law have nothing to do with maintaining that righteousness or getting that righteousness. And people want to quote James as the standard. Why? Because they need to hold on to their pursuit of righteousness. Because that gives them power, control, pride, and it gives them their own sense of righteousness. And by doing that, they reject the righteousness of God which is the completed work of Jesus Christ. That's our righteousness. There's no law, no act, no nothing that we have to pursue in order to gain that righteousness or maintain it. And there's nothing we can do to lose it. It's all based on the completed work of Jesus Christ. And that's different from the message of James. James.